But this is not right. Look, they got to be more careful down there. I mean, this guy now, he spent four, he spent 38 hours in jail. I wouldn't want to spend 38 seconds in jail, let alone 38 hours. Now in Judge McNally's court, we have a young man who was arrested and jailed for over 38 hours, and no one knows why. Let's see what Judge Dad has to say about this. Did you get printed the other day at Woodhaven? Yes, I did, Your Honor, because you told me to. Right. Yep. And I didn't know I had a tether violation, and they arrested me. And also, I need to pay uh, a ticket Slow today. Slow down. Slow down. Sorry. Sorry. Slow down. Let, let your lawyer speak. I see a warrant. Um, he, I see he was picked up on a warrant while being fingerprinted out of the Third Circuit in Wayne County. Do you have a, uh, is there a deputy right there? Yeah. Deputy, can you come back up here, please, and state and spell your name for me? My name is Officer Marquise Rigel, M-A-R-Q-U-I-E-S, last name Rigel, R-I-D-G-E-L-L. -L. Thank you. Mr. Elliott was picked up on a tether violation, it says, on the 4th. For the life of me, I cannot figure out what the tether violation is. I read this record, this report here, and it says that he was over there lurking at the police department. Um, He's being I noticed the above subject tracing the location of the Woodhaven Police Department. I contacted Woodhaven Police, did verify subject was there. I, 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 a detainer was emailed. I was notified the subject was at Woodhaven Police to be fingerprinted. A Third Circuit warrant was found and the subject was put into EMU writ status. So this has nothing to do with him. Him being in custody right now has nothing to do with a tether violation. Is that true or false? I'll have to look, sir. Hold on. I don't see any reference in there about a tether violation. Well, it says it in here. There was, I mean, implicitly they say it, but I don't see where there was one. I didn't order him not to go back to the Woodhaven Police Department. I think he was picked up on another warrant. There, there is a reason to believe, uh, and I, I'm going to state it, uh, not my client. And uh, Mr. Elliott, I don't want you to say anything because you haven't pled guilty to anything and you're presumed innocent. I have reason to believe that maybe um, there was a battery not charged when he was at home. Um, that may be an issue. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes. According to the system, it says he's here for malicious destruction and two counts of domestic violence. Now, about that report or being um, a violation of his tether, I would have to even read the report myself, sir. I didn't write the report. Can I speak? You're just, Elliot, I want to make sure you don't say anything that incriminates you because you haven't pled guilty to anything. I know I've been I've been told four different things that it is like, I don't know what I'm. Arresting. That's fine. What is it? What is it that you're being told? I'm being told for them from the sheriffs that picked me up from the Woodhaven Police Department. It was a tether, a tether violation. Then when I first asked the Woodhaven Police Department, when I first got there, they told me it was a stalking charge. I've never stalked anybody. Then now it's a, a malicious destruction of property, which I'm paying off. That's from that's from another case at Woodhaven that I'm paying off. And I need to pay that ticket off today as well, which is another problem for me, but that's beyond the point. So basically, I'm very confused. I my my tether died. I know it's a tether violation, but may, I don't know. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm not trying to confuse you. All right, slow either. down. Just relax. We're, we're all trying to figure it out together. Take, okay. take a deep breath and relax. I, I did represent him on the one with the uh, malicious uh, destruction of property. It was a, a vehicle. Lisa. There is a note here, malicious destruction of property. It says uh, malicious destruction signs, bills, or notices. He's it says probation. he has a... To Judge Hessen? Correct. Yes, I, do, I, I handled that file. Was he on... Um, is he in custody on that one? I can't figure out why this gentleman is in custody. 
I need, I have a job. Mr. Elliott, I'm going to straighten it out for you, sir. Thank okay? you. I'm, re I'm really thankful. He's working two jobs. He's stressed because he's going to lose his job. I just lost my old job because I got locked up. All right, settle down. I'm going to help you. Okay. Assuming you need the help or assuming you're deserving of the help. It doesn't look like he's on a tether for Judge Hessen's case, so there should not be a violation for that. I don't understand this. I, I, I just don't understand this. So it, it's, they're saying at approximately 6 p.m., 1900 hours, well, or 7 p.m., I guess that would be, while monitoring the OmniLink software, I noticed the above subject tracing the location of the Woodhaven Police Department. I contacted Woodhaven and did verify the subject was there. This is a sergeant from the sheriff's tether unit. The detainer was emailed that I was notified the subject was at Woodhaven to be fingerprinted. A third circuit warrant was found and the subject was put in the EMU writ status. So I don't know what the third circuit warrants on, but that has to be the reason. But, there, but I'm just curious as to why they're putting him in front of me on a tether violation when it appears there was none. The subject was in compliance with his curfew at the time of the arrest, unless the tether violation is for, for violating a law. And that could have happened while he was on a bond and I ordered him not to violate a law. So I don't, I'm, I'm unclear. Do we have any other indication that this gentleman was picked up on any other case after he was in front of Judge Hessen actually for arraignment on February 21 of 23 and up through the present? And I see nothing. The Wayne County site only shows two cases. Excuse me, Ron. Yes. Again, this is Officer Rigel again. I just got off the um, phone with the coordinator and Officer Griffiths was stating that in the report, it should have said something about him violating due to police contact. Well, that could, hang on, Mr. Elliott. But nobody's telling us what the police contact is. I don't know what the third circuit warrant is. I'm looking at his lien. Now, granted, this one is dated March the 28th, so maybe you need to update that, Lisa. But I don't see anything on here on his criminal history indicating any other charge emanated after the February 21 of 23 incident. So why don't you start by running his lien again, an updated version. I know that's only eight, nine days, but- Can I say something maybe real that. I'm sorry. Can I say something real quick? Sure. I'm wondering if they think he was there getting printed on new charges. Not well, that's what I'm, that's what that's, Mr. Ellie, would you please stop? I ordered him that day, deputy, to go and get printed at Woodhaven Police Department. He hadn't done it previously. I ordered him to go over there and get printed. That's why it was at the Woodhaven Police Department, because on this domestic violence case that I have that has an offense date of January 27 of 23, for which he was arraigned on February 21 of 23, I noticed when he was in court on April the 4th that he had not been printed. So I ordered him to go over there and get printed, and I set this for a bench trial. Then they're talking about on the tether violation that he was at Woodhaven PD. I, I think I think there's been some. Someone, I, think I think there's, there's been a misunderstanding, Your Honor. So do I. Your Honor, I'm going to ask. Wait, that, do we have any ish, any indication that he has any other case pending in Wayne County Circuit Court, Mr. The Deputy Marquez? No, sir, not that I see. None but the current stuff. Lisa, do you fighting. have do you have any indication on anything, including the lien that you're either have run or are running or about to run, that there's any other hold? No, the lien is printing down there in the courtroom right now. And I looked on the Wayne County site. It only shows these two cases. But held on. So the problem is somebody had make, made an assumption. And my father used to tell me what would happen if you made an assumption. And, and, and it's not a good one. This guy's been sitting in. 
He's been sitting in jail for two days. Unless there's a hold, I want him released immediately. Thank okay. you, Judge. Okay. No tether? Well, no, Mr. he's still going to have his tether. I still want the tether on him. If, if, if Wait. We, yes, Judge. I want I want the tether on him still with the same tether conditions. Um, and, and we will send those back if we need to. Uh, no contact with Isabella Cavallon or prosecution witnesses. No alcohol, no drugs, no firearms, no dangerous weapons. He's not to be within two miles of that individual, that individual's residence or place of employment, and he was not to be released until fitted with a GPS tether. So what I would like is, are you, do you still have the tether right now, Mr. Elliott? No, they cut it off, Your Honor. So they need to get that back on him with those same conditions. And would you tell them the judge would really appreciate it if they would expedite it since he's just spent 48 hours in jail or if thereabouts 38 hours in jail that he shouldn't have spent 38 seconds on yes, so, no, no, so, my you need that. so lisa let's send that back the uh minimus will just do an amendment and say the defendant has posted bond because he has february 28th of 23 i'll just make a note and then you can put in the conditions to make sure they get all the conditions in here defendant uh, taken into custody on April the 4th. It appears that was in error. Defendant to be a re released immediately, but I need you to have that, those. But this is not right. Look, they got to be more careful down there. I mean, this guy now, he spent four, he spent 38 hours in jail. I wouldn't want to spend 38 seconds in jail, let alone 38 hours. Now, he's got himself into trouble, but he still enjoys a presumption of innocence here. And now somebody's going to tell me they can't get the tether, can get tether back on for a day or two or six. And that isn't right either. So go to do whatever you got to do. Tell him the judge said, he wants this guy fitted with the tether first and foremost right now, as soon as possible, so he can get out of there because he should not have been in custody for the last 38 hours, as far as I can tell. Thank you, Judge. I'm, I'm going to get my, my size in the car right now. And if they need to talk to me, they can call the court and I'll talk to them. But yes, you got to be careful. Thank you very much, Deputy. Have a good day. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Baldwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks a lot, Mr. Elliott. Stay out of trouble, though. I will, man. I'll talk I to you. I don't want you to say a word. Shh. Stay out of trouble. Don't say a word. Good luck. So sloppy. This made me sad and angry. This young man is trying to get his life straight, working two jobs, following the rules of his bond, does everything the judge tells him to do and he gets falsely arrested and jailed for over 38 hours. I wouldn't be surprised if this kid sues for false arrest and wrongful incarceration. Let me know what you think about this case in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.